Hello, I'm P3, responsible for analyzing and improving the performance of in-vehicle infotainment platform at Hyundai Motor Company. Uh, today, I would like to introduce various platform analysis features and automatic performance monitoring capabilities using an open source program called Guider. Uh, first, let's briefly discuss performance issues and then I'll uh, introduce performance analysis tools, including Guider. Next, I'll showcase features that enable automatic performance monitoring and generation of analysis reports when issues arise. Uh, finally, I'll share what performance data generated in vehicles uh, can be collected on the server and utilized well. Uh, as we develop our product, we encounter various performance issues. Uh, if there is something uh, perceptible, it would be things like uh, slowness, and uh, instability and stuttering. Uh, analyzing performance issues at the level of a single app is not uh, very challenging. Uh, at most platforms provide good debugging and analysis features for apps. Uh, however, when the uh, scope of the problem extends to the uh, platform level, uh, such as kernel, analyzing and improving it uh, becomes much more difficult. And the reason is that the areas to examine broaden, the amount of uh, study requires increases, and the analysis pro programs to be used are uh, multiplied. So in the case of the infotainment system developed our team, uh, various apps and services within the system are interconnected to implement complex and sophisticated specs, uh, considering features and that interact with external systems like head-up display and cluster and ADAS and others, uh, the system uh, becomes extremely complex. Uh, performance issues uh, arising from such complex systems are truly diverse and often challenging to analyze. To quickly analyze issues and pinpoint their causes uh, in such complex systems, the best approach is to uh, swiftly select and adaptively uh, use the optimal tools. So what performance analysis tools should be used effectively? Uh, analysis tools can be broadly categorized in three types. Monitoring program that show the uh, current state in real time. Profiling programs that collect and summarize information over a certain period. And tracing programs that uh, display all uh, detailed operations. Uh, as performance analysis tools are diverse for each system area, users uh, need to choose them wisely according to uh, their uh, priority and uh, uh, experience. Uh, however, when actual performance issues arise, knowing where to start, uh, which tools to use first, and can be quite challenging without prior experience. Uh, having worked in performance analysis for several years, I have come to realize that uh, many of these tasks are inconvenient and insufficient and uh, even impossible with the uh, tools available. Over time, I found myself in uh, situations uh, where I had to uh, analyze systems without access to the source code and compiler, uh, relying only on a root shell. In light of these challenges, uh, I decided that I would, be, uh, I, I would be more practical to create my own tool, uh, leading to the development of an open source program uh, called Guider. Uh, Guider, as mentioned earlier, uh, provides uh, visualization features uh, along with monitoring and profiling and tracing features. Uh, this, uh, all these features operate immediately on the uh, target without the need for source code and compiler. Developed for comprehensive performance analysis, Guider currently comprises uh, around 150 comments and various options, uh, the details of which will be explained later. It utilizes uh, GPL2 uh, with the uh, official rep uh, repository hosted on GitHub uh, supporting also PIP and Open Embedded. And Guider can be uh, executed with basic Python without uh, the need for separating building and installation or environment setup. 
It supports popular CPU architectures and requires about two megabytes of storage size. And during system monitoring, uh, CPU resources are consumed about two or three percent of one core. And RAM, RAM usage is around uh, 17 megabytes. Guida operates as a uh, standalone on all uh, Linux-based platforms, and Android and Azure, and uh, um, partially uh, on macOS and Windows also. There are uh, two examples to use Guider. Uh, one is by installing it using PIP, and uh, the other is by downloading it from GitHub. So I'm sorry for the color and size of font. It's a little bit difficult to see. First, let's uh, try installing it using PIP. Yeah, it's done. And next is the method of uh, downloading from GitHub. Yeah, it's done to use Guider. Uh, Guider currently uh, incorporates approximately 150 built-in commands. It's implemented directly uh, without relying on external execution binaries, ensuring uh, independence from dependencies. In addition to the monitoring, profiling, and tracing and visualization features you see in the uh, diagram, Guider also uh, supports more functions experimental analysis features uh, that is capabilities to control systems and task communication features in a server client structure for a remote control and system load testing and various utility utility features are uh, included uh, due to time constraint i will provide a brief overview of the most commonly used ones today so let me guide you through the frequently used features in Guider with a video demo. I hope this helps understanding Guider. So first, let's explore the help and examples. Uh, Guider has about 150 commands supporting various operating systems, and you can check the help for each command by running it uh, with H option. At the top of the command, help, you will find descriptions, options, and examples for the respective command. Like this, and before analysis, let's create a workload. Uh, Guider supports the creation of CPU workload with the CPU test command. The command, this command creates a task called Guider worker that use 100% of one CPU core uh, similarly, you can allocate and monitor system memory every second with the memtest command. Yeah, and uh, there is also the IO test command for reading uh, from file or writing to a file repeatedly and uh, measuring a lapse of time. Yeah, and now let's check how much CPU is workload task is using with the top command. Uh, this shows that the guider worker task is using around 100% of one core. If you uh, use a filter option to focus on specific task with G option, you can use like this. It support regular expression. Yeah, and you can also save this information to a file with O option. Yep, and visualize the profile result with a draw command. Then the SVG file is created. And let's open it with Chrome browser. Yeah, 
This way, you can create resource usage graph and detailed information about process using a lot of memory. And next, uh, let's check information about files or sockets opened by task with the ftop command. Uh, without filter option, it shows the number of uh, number and types of file descriptors and sockets of all tasks. And applying a filter, we can use G option with uh, target task name or ID. Yeah, it shows details about the file descriptors and socket, including uh, position, open options, and protocols, and others. So now let's move on to uh, function monitoring commands. Uh, to monitor in real uh, time which functions a uh, particular task is using a uh, CPU or taking a long time to complete, uh, we can use utop command. So let's create a workload in background like this and start monitoring the functions of the task dynamically with utop command. Yeah, this shows functions that are uh, waiting or taking a long time to execute in real time. And you can save this information to a file with O option. And after then, uh, convert the monitoring result into a flame graph file with draw, draw flame command. The name of the file is a little bit wrong. And open the generated SVG file with Chrome browser. Yeah, you can visualize profiling result in a flame graph. So clicking on specific functions provide, provides an uh, extended view of the related course tag and you can search for specific functions using control F with uh, regular expressions. <coughs> then yeah, it's highlighted with red colors. And next, let's uh, monitor system calls for specific tasks in real time. Uh, first, create a workload in a background again. And start mo uh, monitoring the system calls of this task with this top command, like this, yeah. This shows real-time system calls being invoked, and saving converting uh, result into a frame graph file is also available, as before. And similarly, let's monitor Python functions. Uh, first, uh, run the IOTAP program that is uh, written in Python and very famous to monitor system IO. Yeah, and next, uh, start monitoring the Python functions of this task using pytop command. Yeah, saving and converting the result into a flame graph file is also available as before. And now let's explore uh, profiling commands at the system level. Uh, first, profile the action of a uh, thread with the rec command in background and create a workload uh, for a short time. Then uh, stop profiling and convert the profiling data into a report file. Yeah, it's done. And let's open the out file. Yeah, this report file summarizes resource usage for system and task. It also shows uh, scheduling latency and uh, scheduler level stats and block operation size and count and more stats. Yeah, there are many stats. Below, you will find histograms for uh, which stats. And detailed information on block operation patterns such like sequ uh, sequential or random access. 
uh, uh, file operations about file paths and access size. And now uh, let's visualize the scheduling information of task uh, based on profiling data with a timeline. We can use the draw command to create a SVG file and open it Chrome browser. After drawing, yeah, open it in Chrome browser. Then, yeah, we can view task scheduling on each core. Mouse over each bar to see task names and scheduling related information. And the, uh, the black color at the top of each bar indicates uh, blocking state, and red indicates uh, preemption state in scheduler. And next, uh, let's profile uh, all system calls invoked in this system. Start profiling with the sysselect command and in background, and generate a workload for a short time and stop profiling and create a report file with the report command again. Then open the generated report file to see states about all invoked system calls. And then uh, there are many type and duration and call count and error count and time statistics on system level. And you can also check the similar stats about each task. Yeah, and now uh, let's move on to tracing command. Uh, first one is uh, system call tracing with the S trace command. It's very similar to Linux S trace. You can trace all system calls for specific tasks with backtrace in real time. Uh, I think this video's frame rate is a little bit bad. And next, let's uh, trace user level native functions with the btrace command. Yeah, like this. Yeah. If there are too many functions called, you can apply function filter with C option. The btrace command also supports additional sub-command for handling when a specific function called. Uh, this is the list of sub-commands for uh, function call handling. When the target function is called, you can read or manipulate values of specific register or memory and introduce delays and repeatedly call again or direct, redirect to other functions. For example, to read the data to be uh, written during a write operation. You can use this command. So you can read all buffer data from target task memory like this. And similarly, let's uh, trace Python functions of IOTA process executed before with PyTap command like this. And let's move on to signal tracing command. First, create a test program source code. Uh, this uh, uh, will use out of bounds array index. So if you run the following trace command, sig trace, the process received the sig abort due to stack smashing detection. So as it use an out of bound uh, array index, and finally, uh, let's explore a memory leak tracing command. First, create an uh, example program. And this will allocate about 100 megabyte memory and keep them. And run the leak trace command. Yeah, the guider.out file contains a, a table at the bottom displaying call stack. 
allocation size and count of unreleased uh, functions. So additionally, it shows a file level information and open the generate FSVG file, then you can view a frame graph of these uh, functions. So unlike servers, uh, embedded systems with significant resource constraint always uh, need to archive maximum performance with minimal resource. Uh, to archive this, strict validation, analysis, and optimization of performance must be conducted over a uh, considerable period. However, the modern SD SDV development process requires greater flexibility and the development of more features within shorter cycle. So as new features with complex uh, interdependencies are continuously added, and fixed test cases alone cannot uh, cover all user scenario. So furthermore, uh, previous guider commands uh, could only be used in person when the state persists or was reproducible after an issue occurred. So therefore, there is a need for a capability to monitor vehicles from the development stage onward and automatically analyze and report performance issues when they occur. So I updated Guider to be the uh, automated performance monitoring daemon. Uh, Guider daemon automatically monitors uh, the performance of the system and generate re uh, performance report based on the collected data in case of any issues. So all of these operations are performed automatically and based on uh, various threshold values defined in a uh, file beforehand. So firstly, uh, the object uh, that can be monitored include a wide range of items uh, from the physical devices of the system to logical resources, various logs, diverse types of functions, and even IPC. Everything can be automatically monitored. Not limited to the system level, monitoring at the task level and function level is also possible. Uh, to effectively utilize this capability, uh, careful preparation of monitoring settings, conditions, and uh, strategies is crucial. Uh, actually, each monitoring item is detailed with uh, these monitoring values. The automatic performance monitoring function uh, is executed by Guider as follows. Initially, Guider wrote the configuration file to understand the monitoring targets and conditions, such like threshold, and then it begins monitoring. So when an issue occurs, Guider automatically executes the corresponding command list sequentially. The command list may uh, involve directly uh, handling the problem and collecting data for performance analysis or sending notification to external systems. Uh, if there is a comment in the list that generates a performance report, Guider creates a performance report as a file in the storage. Uh, this continuous performance monitoring function must require minimum system resources. Uh, next is the most crucial part of the performance setup. During initialization, Guider wrote the configuration file to uh, understand the monitoring targets scope and conditions, then uh, when the conditions are met uh, during monitoring, uh, re registered commands are automatically executed sequentially. Then left side of the screen represents uh, uh, the format, the file format uh, defining these events. The right side shows corresponding example values. At the top level, you define the monitoring targets as shown earlier, such uh, like CPU, in the next level, you specify the scope. If it's for the entire system, uh, it should be entered as system. And if it's for the specific task, the task name or ID can be entered. In the uh, subsequent level, you define event conditions and processing method. Uh, this includes the uh, applicability of the condition and threshold values and continuous conditions and uh, a list of commands to be automatically executed when an event occur. The most critical aspects here are the threshold 
and the list of comments. Uh, when the uh, conditions meet the threshold, the comments from the list are automatically executed sequentially. And summarizing the example on the uh, right, right side, uh, it means monitoring CPU usage at the system level. If the uh, total CPU usage remains above 95% for five seconds, automatically execute the following two commands. The commands may be built-in guider commands starting with save that uh, generate a uh, performance report automatically uh, based on collected data or external shell commands executable. I'll explain more about the content of uh, performance report later. Uh, Guider operates as a uh, monitoring daemon in the background, so there is a need, f uh, need to control it externally for various purposes. To facilitate this, the following uh, control commands are provided for use in the shell. So these commands enable you to change settings or control the operation of guider during runtime without any restarting. So let me explain uh, the automatically generated report files at the time of uh, problem occurrence. Guider continuously collects the system performance information from the start of monitoring and storing it in fixed size internal ring buffer. When the save command is executed upon uh, encountering an issue, Guider generates a performance report file. And the performance report file summarizes the system state for a specific duration around the time of the issue. It includes various details, but I'll uh, specifically mention about the most crucial summary information and uh, snapshot details. Firstly, the top command info table provides a line-by-line -line summary of the collected system information. It includes CPU, memory, I.O., network, and system event information gather, gathered at uh, regular intervals. Uh, below that, there are tables summarizing the resource usage changes for tasks uh, in each resource unit. This, uh, the usage of the resources for tasks is displayed uh, over time on the right side. In addition to this CPU usage summary table, uh, named top CPU info. Uh, there are also summary tables for delay and SCAT priority and GPU and VSS and RSS and block storage network and C group. The previous uh, summary information is extremely useful for analyzing changes uh, in resource uses, uh, either uh, the system or uh, task at a glance. Uh, however, since it is summarized information, it can be uh, challenging to examine detailed information at a specific point in the time. In such cases, by reviewing the snapshot information included in the report file, so you can access more specific system information. Uh, the system status is displayed in the format uh, of the top command output. So at the top, uh, total amount of uh, system events and physical resources are shown. And below that, uh, information such as system uh, latency and resource uses and the number of events are displayed. Uh, of course, usage information for supported uh, GPU is available. Uh, in the last section, resource uses and uh, event information for each task are displayed. So at the very bottom, uh, special task information, uh, including new and terminated and abnormal tasks is, uh, is, uh, is able to be presented. So based on experience, uh, setting the monitoring buffer size of guider to three megabyte and generating a report file result in approximately uh, 15 minutes of system information being captured so uh, in reality, analyzing such a large amount of text manually is almost impossible due to uh, the extensive numbers that are not easily accommodated on a single screen. So in such cases, uh, the report file uh, need to be visualized as shown on the screen. 
Guido allows you to convert the text-based report files to SVG files. And uh, when opened in a browser, it produces an image that uh, provides a comprehensive view of the entire period. At the top, uh, you can see system CPU usage and GPU usage and task-specific CPU usage. Below that, I.O. and memory reclaimed related statistics for storage and network and more uh, uh, displayed. At the very bottom, the system's memory usage is shown. Uh, you can also display changes in the task memory usage and I.O. usage and more. So additionally, uh, it's possible to visualize uh, system uh, log with the report file uh, when using a uh, conversion command, mm. you can input the log file path and define log information as events with additional options. Then the output file will display the occurrence, time, and context of system log at the uh, top of this screen. So since platform context and uh, system context are displayed together, uh, the analysis becomes much more manageable. When there is a problem with performance, a report file is made in a, a specific directory with the predefined naming format. So this naming method avoids making a duplicated file and make it simple to find them based on uh, the order uh, they were created, not the system time. So you can also set a limit on the directory size to automatically delete uh, the oldest reports when it gets too full. So this way, uh, storage will not uh, fill, uh, fill up endlessly, so preventing possible problems in our production. So okay, let's start the demo video. Uh, first, let's take a look at the configuration file. Yeah, at the top, you will find the categorized monitoring target followed by descriptions of each uh, event scope Nice, a very small font. And attributes describing the event conditions are listed like this. Then you receive variables related to the file naming and finally the built-in commands like this. Then let's move on to the uh, section describing performance events. To CPU, yeah. The first level CPU yeah, repre represents the monitoring target followed by system as monitoring scope and then attributes for each event. Uh, this condition means that uh, if the overall CPU usage remains above 95% for more than five ticks, it will automatically execute the save command and it will uh, create a report file. And uh, let's activate events, uh, testing conditions. We have a task starting with yes, maintains CPU usage above 98% for more than th three seconds. Here, and the CMDT tab, you tap to command for the yes event handles function profiling for two threads uh, showing the highest CPU usage in the process. So, saving it, and let's start Guider for automatic performance monitoring, like this command. Then uh, it has started with logs about enabled events. Then let's create a workload on another shell. The first workload runs the YES program making the yes task utilize 100% of one CPU core. And after uh, three seconds, automatic function profiling for the yes thread begins and the results are stored in a file. Yes, finished. So if you open this file,
Yeah, you will see the functions that consume the uh, significant amount of CPU for the yes thread. Last section. The performance information, including uh, the performance report collected through the previous automatic monitoring, is specific uh, to a single vehicle and exists uh, only within a vehicle. So, to effectively analyze and utilize performance data for a large number of vehicles, it needs to be collected on the server. So, now let me talk about uh, this in uh, more detail. So the real-time performance data generated by Guider can be uh, continuously updated in a separate JSON file. So here is an example of some of the information. In this format, uh, details at the system and task level for each resource unit are represented. So at the top left, you will find uh, threshold events. That is a display of uh, performance issues called event that occurred uh, since booting along with its count. Uh, at the top right, you will find peak figures for maximum usage for each resource. We can uh, transfer this data to our analysis servers for analyzing the performance of driving cars. Uh, while it would be impressive to collect and uh, process and display real-time information for all devices on the server, uh, but I think real-time collection and processing may not be uh, effective considering cost, stability, and uh, availability. For uh, your uh, information, uh, our Hyundai Motor Company currently operates approximately 10 million connected cars. So the scenario I have chosen in Barbus, uh, not real-time, but uh, aggregating performance data at the moment when the vehicles stop driving and turn off. So analyzing them on a daily basis. So uh, this processed data is then used to provide a dashboard overview of general performance for a large number of vehicles. Mm -hmm. In situations where issues arise, detailed analysis is also conducted using performance report. As potential data candidates to collect on the server, we have a list of performance issues and peak resource uses and performance report. As uh, demonstrated earlier with performance report data alone, uh, not only uh, can we obtain specific snapshots of the moment when an issue occurs, but we can also visualize extended periods before and after the problem arises. So additionally, uh, we can use Violin Graph to visualize peak resource uses data collected in uh, large quantities. So this enables us to uh, categorize and observe trends in resource uses among vehicles based on factors like platform and time and version. So for example, uh, we can monitor resource changes after deploying new versions and track corner cases in the operation of complex specs and uh, identify abnormal system behavior. Certainly, uh, analyzing the detailed performance reports becomes possible by linking the detected, uh, detected unusual data with the uh, performance report using timestamp, uh, vehicle, and platform information. Beyond peak data, utilizing load average data uh, enables to analyze uh, user overhead in our system. So, so far I have explained some kind of uh, useful guide features and uh, more features besides uh, the one I described, but uh, I couldn't explain all them because of time limitation. And I introduced the performance monitoring demo features. It will be more expanding to manage and analyze uh, system performance issues itself. And for specific details, please refer to the uh, readme file in GitHub. And if you have any questions, please contact me using uh, email or GitHub. Yeah, so thank you for your listening for a long time. Yeah, thank you.